any no an action anywhere is repeated everywhere the measure of desire for action is measured out on wave axis in octave harmonics at a speed of 186,000 miles per second octave harmonics on wave axis are east-west magnetic poles the same measure of desire is marked out from the same zero source in the north-south polar directions which extend from the centering zero at 90 degrees from the equatorial plane of the east-west poles. Matter is born at zero planes of equal potential. Polarization builds it up to maturity at 90 degrees from zero planes. Depolarization then returns it to the zero of its birth. If similar balloons were inflated, they would touch each other at six points on their curved curved surfaces. To continue the inflation until the empty spaces were filled would flatten those curved surfaces until they become six flat planes of zero curvature. That is what happens in nature. Cube wave fields are thus formed to bound wave fields and to insulate one from another by compelling a reversal of direction and polarity when radii meet those planes of zero curvature. The entire inner structure of, er of every wave field is curved, beginning with the sphere, which centers it and ending at the planes of zero curvature, which bound it. Every wave field is a cosmic projector, which radiates light outward through the concave lenses of spheroidal pressure gradients to bend toward the mirrors of wave field boundaries of zero curvature, where curvature reverses as it is reflected into neighboring wave fields. It is also a receiver of light rays which bend inwardly toward its center of gravity by way of the convex lenses of pressure gradients. Number 31. The true True cube wave fields occur only where true spheres are formed. This occurs in only one place in the entire nine octave wave cycle. That one place is carbon. The crystals of pure carbon are true cu cubes. I will amplify this fact later. Number 32, the three-dimensional illusion of nature is caused by a series of three light mirrors of zero curvature which center the cube in three planes, all of which are at right angles to each other, and six boundary mirrors of the cube which are likewise at right angles to each other. 33, this is a zero universe of rest from which motion is projected into seeming existence and then is retracted into its zero of rest. That zero bonded field of reversed motion withdraws within its central zero as it depolarizes, leaving a complete record of the pattern of its actions reactions in the zero inert gas of its octave wave for repolarizing into the same pattern form as it reappears. Number 34. Every action reaction is three. Three is the basic number of this universe. Three is a two-way polar extension of its centering source. Three is the fulcrum and the lever. Three is the expansion contraction from a centering source of your heartbeat and the heartbeat of the universe. Three is balance extended to two equal and opposite balances. Three is the sexless father-mother divided and extended to the sexed condition father and mother. Three is your in-breathing, out-breathing, and it is, it is the piston of the wave trial, wave crest, compression, expansion, pump, which this universe is. Three is the one dimension of polarity, north and south or east and west, 
but the three-dimensioned volume, which polarity centers and bounds, is three multiplied by three. Three is the spear, for the spear is but one form of the three dimensions of length, breadth, and thickness. Its radii are alike in all these dimensions. It has no diagonals, angles, or planes. Nine is the hot spherical sun crystallized into the cold cube of space. The cube is nine-dimensional. Its eight tones and fulcrum are nine. Its eight diagonals and fulcrum are nine. Its three extended planes and six boundary planes are nine. Nine is the octave wave, which consists of four extended pairs centered by the zero of their source. 35. Beyond nine, nature cannot pass. Every action-reaction, however, must add up to nine. Not one event in nature can be more or less than nine. The earth is not a magnet. 36. It is commonly stated in science textbooks that the earth is a giant magnet. That is not true to nature's processes. The equator of a magnet is not a center of gravity. The center of the earth is a center of gravity. All matter, whether of earth, suns, or corpuscles, is formed between the opposite poles of two magnets. To produce the effect of gravity, two dividing equators must be united as one. Man's bar magnets are cylinders of unchanging condition. Nature's magnets are cones of ever-changing conditions. The equator of man's magnets is of zero curvature and centers its poles. The equator of nature's magnets is curved and is off-center. Much confusion has arisen from this misconception. Every particle of matter is both cathoid and anoid, just as living bodies are also dying. 37. This is a radial universe of ever-changing pressures. Every extending particle which leaves a cathoid or anoid is negative, for it expands as it leaves its primary and thus discharges. That, same, that very same negative particle, electron or otherwise, changes its polarization intensity every millionth of an inch from either its cathoid or anoid. That is the reason science has so many names for the same particle. When a particle arrives at wave amplitude or any equator where the pressure condition is reversed, it can well be called a neutron, for its polarity is balanced at that reversal point. After its curvature is reversed, it then becomes a positively charging particle, for it, contact, it contracts as it radially approaches its anoid. It might then be called a positron or a positive meson, or many other names as its condition changes. There are no separate particles or, or elements. Number 38. This same principle applies to all of the elements of matter. All of them are made up of the same units of opposed motion. We call them hydrogen, iron, carbon, sulfur, magnesium, nickel, and many other names. We think of them as separate substances having separate properties. All of the elements are made up of the very self-same spiral units of motion or vortices. The only reason we have we have for thinking of them as different substances is because they have certain predictable effects upon each other and upon our senses. The fact is, however, that their pressure conditions are different in every part of the wave in which they find themselves. Lithium particles become boron particles when the gyroscopic relation of the plane of lithium's orbit changes to the plane occupied by boron, and so on during the whole nine octaves of changing pressure conditions. Oh dear, oh dear.
can't read this page. It's upside down. Mm. Don't know what to do. I guess I will end this video and see if I can figure this out. Let's see, is the next page upside down? Oh, no, it isn't. Just that one. Okay. Maybe I'll put a mirror up and, <laughs> and reverse this. Change its polarity. Because this is not going to be possible for me to read this upside down. Accidents happen. That's all right. Just while I got a little time here, I want to say that this is important for us to know. We could save lots of money if our scientists would learn some of this science that is pure science. Because I think that Haldron Collider is working with the germ of matter to try to discover the God cell or the God particle or something. And they're never going to su succeed in that. Of course, they are looking at the motion of that particle, but they're not on the right track, I don't think. But look, they've spent billions of dollars on that. <laughs> How much better that could have been spent. Maybe something good will come out of all the research. I don't know. But this is so important that people of a scientific mind, and I'm not really all that scientific minded, but I do understand parts of this here and there, and I can see that our scientists have been doing just what Russell said. They're studying effect and not considering cause. And if they don't consider cause, they're leaving God out of the equation, and they will get nowhere. They're just going to spin their wheels. But maybe some of those scientists, and maybe someone listening to me, read this, even though I don't explain it. I mean, I don't understand it so well. Maybe someone listening to this will be the one that puts all the pieces together based on this true knowledge of what creation really is. And I hope that's you, whoever you are. Anyway, I've got to figure this out, how to read this upside down page. And I will return in the next video. Over and out for now.